right, so starting off with a recap, what all happened last session? A lot of research. Yeah, a lot of research on the basilisk. I actually found my notes. Let's see, Savias related their dossier. Uh, yeah, did some more research. And then we landed on Uria 7. Oh, Anima had a conversation with Spectra somewhere in there. Everyone had a conversation with Spectra yeah, except true. for Belle. Yeah. <laughs> which, like, this is different. Usually not everyone wants to talk to Spectra, but it was one after the other, and it was great. Yeah, so what did Anima talk to her about? Anima talked to Spectra about Spectra's friend who a million years ago... About a hundred years ago. <laughs> since we've been recording, it was like a year ago <laughs> when she yeah. called Anima by the wrong name. Yeah. And I finally, like, asked about it, because there were things going on, y'all. Yeah. I was very excited when you asked about that, because I was like, <laughs> finally! Finally. And then it sort of transitioned into, so, things in the Federation are weird, right? Yeah, <laughs> and then I got a really clutch nat 20 that still didn't give us very much information, because it was... It was the longest of long shots that you would have even maybe heard, oh, much yeah. less remembered anything very oh, vaguely yeah. referencing a possible thing that might exist in the Federation. Oh, yeah. So with the Nat 20, you've heard vague mentions, but yep. not many details. And I remember you also talked to her about how do we get a chance to talk to someone at Nova Station, because they might know something. Because you remember yes. Dottie was contacted by them about a project. Yes. And then, boop! That's it! And what did I talk to her about? By message about the missing people, Spectra said that she's certain that they're alive, but the records got lost or mixed up where they were found. And yeah, uh, the colony ship that the basilisk was supposed to be helping with, because it was a very, very small compartmentalized project, and just stuff disappeared, and everyone's been trying mm -hmm. to figure it out for centuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vi took Jeez. that a bit. Differently than Spectra was expecting. And so, <laughs> there may be a talk about that later. We'll see. Might have mentioned that, so it's the same here as it is in the Federation. Yeah. That Spectra is just like. Basically, that was it. Spectra will remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to have a conversation, but right now is not the best time to have that conversation. Don't mean to interrupt like that. Who have rolled like that on first roll, that test roll? <laughs> Starting with the 20 on shard. Whoever just rolled that. Oh. That 30. That was uh, Benjamin. Yeah. Oh, that Dang. was just me I know. Uh, clicking <laughs> buttons. <laughs> That's a good good first roll. Bree and I are secretly playing a game yeah. in the background. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 You're not supposed to tell them about that. Omnibob is supposed to stay secret. Under the table rolls. The results of the rolls will be uh, will determine how difficult the encounter is. Oops, sorry, I spoiled it. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have done oh, that. 30. Oh, 30. <laughs> All <laughs> AC 30. Everything. Next time, Omni takes control of Asimov's body, she's yeeting it into the sun. Please do not yeet. <laughs> There's a sign that says no yeeting here. Okay, so we got a sign put up somewhere. Wait, wait. I would say minor spoilers for Aspergenesis Revelations, but by the time this comes out. <laughs> If the show's still around, you probably it's probably already happened, so it's fine. True. And for Stavios's conversation, since they are not here, they wanted to talk to Spectre about their role on the ship, some about the Basilisk, which is the ship you are going after, trying to find where it ended up and where it's been all this time. And Spectre hit them with the question of, so... What caused you to fall out with your father? Which is probably the bluntest way she could have asked that. Poking at the daddy issues. Well, in her defense, it's kind of falling out with the owner of a pretty big, like, weapon stealer. She wanted to make sure it wasn't anything untoward, like what people said it was, but it was just... Stavios did not want to work for that kind of company. They didn't want to be that person, and it just ultimately led to a falling out, so... 
Spectre is okay with this. But it was definitely probably not the way Salvia thought that conversation was gonna go. <laughs> and you all landed on Urea 7. Spectra, Tali, and the rest of them are staying back to see if they can um, break into this hangar. Might have retconned at some point when you were walking to the cave. Stavios tripped into something that they ended up being pretty maybe it was, allergic Maybe it was to. those bags that he had, Those because the bags he was using yeah, on his feet. Yeah, they, sli- slipped, they slipped on the yeah. bags. <laughs> yeah, the bags on their feet got tangled up and they just tripped into something and landed in a pile of something that they are actually allergic to. So they had to go back to the ship. Faces blew Which up to that little reaction where faces they'll blows be fine. up. So their face just like, you know, <laughs> one big swollen mess. They looked a little purple when they walked away. So they walked back? Could, could we say we drive them back? I mean, because if we drive here, right? I, I think animals driving? Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, Oh yeah, you, you did drive, someone. so you're able to, or they're able to drive themselves back, but they they were able to get back, and they would have panged Val when they made it back, all right. And Val, you also get the feeling they also wanted to go back to help with negotiation because that's what they're good at. Not as big on the tromping through the forest part. He he didn't he, no much reaction. He just wanted to get out of this. That's what Val's thinking. Yeah. Probably, yeah, good. Valid thought, but it was probably actually an accident. And when we left off, you all heard a stick snapping several yards behind you, and that leads us to our special guest today, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Me or the character? Let's start with yourself first. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm T.T. <laughs> Benjamin. You can find me on Twitter at T.T. Benjamin 1. I'm the host and Dungeon Master of the Lawful Great Adventures podcast, a Pathfinder 1st Edition podcast about four friends on a long journey home. You can also catch me streaming on Thursdays and Fridays. And uh, I love doing guest spots and a nice gin and tonic. If you haven't listened to Lawful Great Adventures, I highly recommend. I've been binging that like no one's business, and now I'm caught up, and it's sad. Sweet. Thank you. Only screaming a little bit. (laughs) Big stuff coming up this next session. Anyway, yeah, and I will be playing a person whom we shall be meeting soon. Yeah, so... What does everyone do when you hear the snicks stick snapping and Bally, you get the sense that someone who's decently powerful Esper has come up behind you? Yeah, didn't you get like a knife? Yeah, uh, yeah I think I said I was going to throw like, uh, do a throwing blade or something. I'm pretty sure I was going to attack. So I'm going to go throw a combat knife. Because, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Warm for that's the other I did warn you, yeah. you would probably very quickly have people trying to kill oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Vi's uh, Phantom Blade is out and is sort of trying to sneak through <laughs> the underbrush. It's going to take the Phantom Blade a bit to get to them. Well, I mean, okay. All right, then, yeah, they'll just go at him. <laughs> so, as long as they're within 60 feet, I'm definitely going to throw a knife. I will say... They're probably not within 30 feet of you. They're a little further than that. So you're able to hear them, but they're... Vi, please do not turbo shank. <laughs> I don't even know what the range is for Phantom Blade. 20, 60, so, so I can hit with this, with this combat knife. It has to stay within 30 feet of you. If it goes out of 30 feet, it drops. All right, so I'll go about the 30 feet and then wait in the like, high. I feel like I'm probably in cover, and I would have precast a uh, protection field. So at least I've got that going for me. <laughs> yeah, Anima, what are you doing? Anima just has her shield out, not immediately attacking, but definitely in a defensive position. That's it. A- so what was that attack roll, Val? Probably not gonna hit, but 18. Throw my combat knife. Does that hit? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Hit. <laughs> oh, no. Even oh. with the shield? I was going to say a shield Yeah, up, even right? with shield up. Oh, well. Well, <laughs> if they're in cover, wouldn't you have disadvantage? Yeah. Ooh. That's one high. Well, so it'll still be... Please don't kill guests. <laughs> so, 1918. So, it's... <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. Ah, heck. <laughs> Ew. I didn't oh, warn you. I know. <laughs> That's nine points okay. of piercing. What does your shield do? Ow. 
just increases my armor class. As soon as Bell hears something, he's gonna okay. just quickly turn around, just throw. This is probably the fastest you guys have ever seen Bell move. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in my final form, just kidding. But yeah, so there's a quick just chuck and then pull out hammer. Yeah, Vi, what's your passive perception again? 18. I'm pretty sure you quickly see this person as they are out of cover long enough to get hit with a knife. Okay. So what does she see? What does she see? Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were asking her. I'm like, I don't know. What does she see? (laughs) (laughs) No, I was asking the person playing the person. So the knife, the knife comes like flinging out and then catches a dude kind of covered in rags right across the arm. And can we swear on this? Yes, light swearing is okay, as long as it's not like a comma. Also, I highly encourage the creation of alien swear words. Alien swear, oh, beautiful. Oh, okay. So the knife the knife goes out, catches this person, and as they're like spinning from the impact of the blade, you just hear, Krish! ah! No, 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 come on. Come on, I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat to you. And then a man comes out with both of his hands up and he is like dressed in an old Federation surveyor uniform with no armor plating and a backpack that looks like it doesn't have a whole lot in it, but he just has a ton of stuff attached to it, including like antenna and like radio equipment and other complicated doodads. He's got like really scraggly black and gray hair and like a big bushy beard, but not in like the cool way. (laughs) In the I haven't shaved in three years way and also haven't looked in a mirror. And his eyes are like wild. And he he, he steps up, I'm not a threat. I don't have a weapon. He conspicuously has a pistol on his hip and I don't have a weapon. And then he looks directly at Vi and says, wait a second. And Vi, you recognize this is someone you've worked with before. It's an information broker who disappeared about three years ago. And he goes by the name Scarecrow. He he was a lot more well kept when you last saw him, I'm pretty sure, but you recognize him. Fish Malik is Kaligane. Unbelievable, this is perfect. And then he like puts his hands out and then just starts walking like he's not a threat anymore. I look at Vi, do you want me to hit this dude? I mean, do you want me just to... Were you looking at Vi, just like, oh, okay, hit him? Okay. Are we killing him we... or no? <laughs> <laughs> Very short. Oh. <laughs> World's shortest guest spot. <laughs> look at, I'm looking at Vi, like, <laughs> you just uh, you just give me the... When she first saw the Federation uniform, she was going for her saber. <laughs> but then she hears Caligone and is like... Scarecrow, what are you doing out here? You disappeared three years ago. It's a, uh, it is a long story. I will tell you this, you are a sight for so eyes. It has been very complicated. Are you still this, the unit? The unit? You know, it's, it is, it is okay. It is fine. I'm no longer the same. You can be open with oh. your friends now. Well, um, I been in the Alliance for a few months now, so... Well, how long has it been? Did say like two months? Three months? At this point, it's probably getting a little closer to three months. It's been a very hectic three months. Yes. You, 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 would, you would probably know that I went missing either yeah. AWOL or MIA uh, about three years ago. Okay. Yeah, this was one of those the person disappeared and your mentor actually didn't seem too sad about it. <laughs> Which could be a couple of reasons why. <laughs> well, because we've covered that, like, sometimes if Federation disappeared, then he was upset. If the other disappeared, he's just like, yeah, they're probably fine. You obviously alliance now. This is good. This is good. This is fortuitous. This is useful. This is useful for all of us. Perhaps the galaxy. Well, sort of, yes. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? This, this, there is an open secret in the universe. Uh, uh, everyone knows it, but no one can say it out loud. And I've been digging too far. And now, now, 
See, this is Kismet. It is, it is not just... It is not just a mere coincidence that we have met in this capacity. Oh no, this is an opportunity. Everything is coming together, don't you see? Are you saying? What? Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, I've met some people before, so no, 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 if you aren't, that's fine. He's not our enemy, Ball. No, I am not your enemy. And I am sane. I am more sane. I am more sane than anyone else in the universe. I am a fake. Oh, oh. Kai, I'm gonna say at this point, this is when you realize that the Ashen Forge standing next to Vi, you recognize her. She sparked a certain curiosity that ended up not working out well for you. Unbelievable. You're traveling with her? And then he like, what? he's like pointing at the Ashen Forge. Uh, you're, you've, you've, see, it's, it's, it's perfect. It all lines up. At that, I'm gonna like elbow Vi and be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I I'll I'll mental missive anima be like I I don't know I don't know what he's talking about. He went missing about three years ago. Looks like he's been here ever since. So it may take a minute for us to fully get what's going on here. Well, okay. <laughs> Do we have any water with us or any like survival packs, right? Do we have any kind of food with us? I believe we travel something, right or no? Would you have brought it with you? I want to say yes, because, I mean, Val would have been, like, make sure we have to something because it may be going traveling some other place. I feel like it would make sense. If not, it's cool, but... Don't you have, like, uh, an adventure pack? Soldier's pack, yeah. Well, you were just going on, like, a short drive from the ship. The question is, what all would you probably brought with At you? Least some I water. feel like <laughs> Val traveling with Stavios... Yeah, traveling with Stavia, yeah. you've got used to basically packing a pocket picnic with you everywhere you yeah, go. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna offer Kai some some of the wood we have, like since especially since Stavia, since they can't have it. So I'm like, you know, seem like you might need some of the eat, baby drink. Kai like holds up his hand and then looks at the water. Tell me, when was this boiled and how? Well, with fire. I mean, heat. Recently, did you get it from a ship? Yes, yes, we came from a ship. Okay. You came from a ship. Have you boiled it since you retrieved the water from a ship? No, we can boil it again. I mean... No. It's okay. I have my own distilled water. You have to be very careful. Nano machines. You understand. That is how they trace you. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I... This is even funnier than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then he... And he walks directly up to Anima and just, like, claps his hands on her shoulders and makes, like, eye contact with her and says, I... I've hated you for so long, but now I have to thank you because it was you, just the mere existence of you, that sent me on the path to finally being awakened. And Vi sort of through almost clenched teeth, being like, Scarecrow, let's do introductions first before you grab someone. Oh, yes, I am very sorry. <laughs> My manners, I have forgotten them. I don't, uh, 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 as they say, get out much anymore. My name is Kai Maddox. Uh, my code name back when I was uh, with the Federation was Scarecrow, which is why she is calling me Scarecrow. The story behind why she would call me, why my nickname was Scarecrow, is uh, a, a very short one, but I don't like to tell it. Okay. And you, and he's like, like staring at Anima. And you, what is your name? <laughs> Question, how tall is Kai? Because Vi, because yeah, Sheridan, yeah, Anima's like, what, six Kai. foot? <laughs> Yeah, Anima's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. Anima's oh. tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kai is 5'9", but very lanky and wiry. And so actually, so what it is, I'm going to do a visual joke now in an audio medium. And he's like, tell me, what is your name? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> That's really good. It's like a, when a small child walks up to an adult and says, Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Tell me everything. I'm like looking between this person who has just like <laughs> grabbed me and like gotten in my space and like Vi and I'm like, shit, like, help? Yeah, he's one of those close talkers too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like really, really gets in there. Bring him back out the Warhammer. Like, hey, can you, um, you can ask them their name, but can you maybe back Personal it up a little space. bit? Just, yeah, like, just a little bit back. Personal please. space, remember? Just, it, she's no, a friend. Okay. No, it, also, it's okay if you back up just a little bit. Just, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he takes a step back. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's the rest of the team is hours away from here. It's just me. Team. Rest Whoa. of the team? Team? I did not come here alone. Also, just a quick clarification thing is the one but the that just waved a war hammer at you is a Madakai, so equally tall lizard man waving a hammer at you. Not swinging, just pointing it, oh, no. just pointing it, you know, just not swinging it, just a little point, you know, it's a little like kind gesture with it. Kai being very craven backs off, hands up again. It is just me, I am not a threat. But, 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 uh, a threat. If anyone I'm, wants I'm to roll an insight I'm, check, yeah, I will. I'm going to. I'm going to roll that insight. This person got in my space. I'm uncomfortable. Oh god, it fell off the table. Oh no! Run away. Uh, yeah. Insight. Well, <laughs> this I'm not a threat t-shirt is bringing up a lot of questions that are clearly answered yeah. by the I'm not a threat t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> So I got a 14, 25. Oh, oh, oh my 12. god. <laughs> what does oh, Vi get the truth. Us? Kai's entire life story. It began on a lonely... <laughs> okay. Kai, I'll tell you this, uh, with, a, with a 25, that's enough to pretty much have a perfect read on this guy. Kai was always a little messed up and asked too many questions. And he was kind of on to something, quote unquote, right before he disappeared. There is a very good chance that he actually has lost his mind into some kind of a conspiracy. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so is there actually a team a couple yeah. of hours away or is that just a figment of his imagination? Yeah. I, I believe you said that I did not come alone. I actually came with a crew, right? So I mentioned that, but then I mentioned what was the likelihood of if instead you're just hiding on this planet by yourself because you think for some reason that someone's trying to kill you. For some reason. But in his defense, <laughs> he could he could really think that they're there, though. He could really believe, like, you know, there's a team there, so he could. <laughs> yeah. So to him, it's like, yeah, no, there's a team, they're, they're back there, so I'm just saying. What is more narratively useful for you, Bree? I feel like to lessen the likelihood of you getting um, springing leaks in unfortunate <laughs> places, you're actually alone. Okay. Yeah. But by you remember that Kai worked with a sort of network. Okay. So he's probably imagining that the people he used to like kind of co-work with okay, are still there. Or okay. somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> I am just out here following my nose. Kai, did you crash land here? No, but I did ditch the ship. Okay. In the bottom of the lake. All right. Why did you choose this planet specifically? Did you just know it was an Alliance space or? I made this determination using 13 independent factors. Each one of them interdependent to guarantee maximum safety and security and lack of prying eyes. The first factor is proximity to Federation space. The second factor is the proximity to Alliance space. The third factor is a combination of the two, which have uh, an overlapping effect on each other. And uh, I ran that through an algorithm, and then I double-checked using a special device which I have created to detect Federation nanomachines. This planet is very low on the nanomachine scale, and therefore I determined it was safe. The fourth factor, and then he's going to keep going. Okay, Kai. <laughs> Fun fact, you are nowhere near Federation space. Anima <laughs> has her shield back in front of her, and she's, like, backing up behind, slightly behind Vi. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny, because um, Vi's so much shorter yeah. than Anima. Yeah, Vi's, like, a foot shorter. <laughs> Just picture the meme of a kid hiding out behind a lamppost. <laughs> Kai, I think you went a bit farther than you planned. This is not in Federation space. You're in Alliance space. This is perfect. This is the last place that they will look for me. Who's they? Or maybe it's the first place, you know, because if I was looking for someone I need to get, you know, maybe they own money or something like that, I'd probably go to a place where I least expected first. So I don't know. I mean. <sighs> Saka me, I have been so misguided, you are so wise. Vi mentally misses Val. Do not antagonize him. 
<laughs> it's hard enough to get information with him calm right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he is really good at digging things up. Too good, in fact. Sorry, I shouldn't address you directly, or should I? Well... The opal star, none of the opal star is nearby, so I can't pretend that I'm now being the uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I am on the run from exactly who you think that I am. Okay. Well, I'm glad you got out. Not everyone is able to. Yes. And now we are reunited. And that means that I can help you and you can help me. Okay. There is a poison running through the Federation. A mental poison. It is up here in the mind and in the heart. It is dangerous. And no one would dare speak it aloud. And I am afraid that if I were to tell you what I know, which is deep enough to put me and you and everyone that touches us in grave danger, that it will spread like a lethal virus. The sot will. The, the, this, the sot in, 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 in okay. the mind. It is like a mind poison. Um, hmm. I wonder where this came from. It's a metaphor. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, hmm, that sounds familiar. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and Vice sort of glances at Farida, or not Farida, I'm sorry, Anima. Farida's <laughs> Yeah. Anima is fully behind you yeah, at this point. Like, like to the side, oh. <laughs> it was not a subtle emotion either, no. I'm pretty sure Vi. She she was fully overwhelmed by this person who like okay. immediately came up to her and told her that they hated her, who she has well, never no, met used before. To, used to hate used to you. Hate you. Used to hate. Used to. I used to hate you, but now <laughs> Also, Kai, you knew her as thirteen thirty five. Oh. That was the designation. Okay. Is is it rude if he were to bring that up? I don't wanna like do like a dead name thing. I have no attachment to it in any way, negative okay. or positive. It's just what they called me in the Federation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you you may not realize that she has another name. You thought she was just like a new version of the Ashen Guard or something. Right. Oh, also, you probably know Vi's mentor, but you, sh but you wouldn't know him as Farrar. Okay. Yes. And I probably wouldn't know anything about the Lizard Man. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We couldn't get everyone linked up. Just to... <laughs> Kai being like really bad at just picking up signals looks over at Anima and says, "Now, uh, tell me this. Are you are you are you 1335?" Um You can't just ask her someone's age, okay, pal? That's no. You can't ask her someone's age. That is I will say that age would be incredibly incorrect for Ashen Force because yeah. they lived to be 50. Yeah. 50-ish, yeah. Two of you to recognize what that means. If yeah, Al would not understand, he's not the brass, he'd be like, I see asking for I age. mean, you would have no reason to understand. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Vi would, I don't know if Anima gave us the designation. I don't remember. That was two years ago, I don't recall. I feel like, or at least you recognize it was an Ashen Guard. Yeah, yeah. I think I would put two and two you together. You would recognize that. That is what they called me. My name is Anima. Hi, you've never seen one speaking this consciously. You've never seen one yeah. speaking like this or acting like this. So, Tell me this, Anima. Did you assign this new designation for yourself or did someone else give it to you? See, that's a really interesting question. Because actually, Anima did pick her own name. <laughs> she did. Yeah. But I don't think Kai's learned... Kai, have you... would you have been trying to learn anything about a light space? Or the Ashen Forge? Or have you just been hiding? Did you just sort of crash here directly? <laughs> He's been in hiding, but this is definitely on the verge of a Eureka moment for him. Because this was part of the secret that got him in trouble. Okay. Yeah, I mean... and so this is his first time seeing an Ashen Forge. Yeah, like a real, like an Ashen Forge, yeah. like a like a, a mindful, willful being. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Ashen Guard are very different. They yeah. do like there's you can't see any intelligence in their eyes. They don't have personalities. Think um, I find um, mindless robots. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
I picked the name Anima. The name originally given to me when I was created was Ilya. Kai's, like, whole face, like, lights up. And then he reaches into his backpack Whoa, hey. and pulls out... Hey, hey, no, 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 no. And then he pulls out just, like, a ream of papers and then just, like... I have been waiting for this moment for three and a half years. And then he throws them in the air and is like, Eureka! I was right! I was right! It's true! Just look at Vi. <laughs> I, I think at that point, <laughs> Vi, Vi is like, okay. So, Anima here is actually, she was born, no, uh, originated from the Alliance. And at some point was taken to the Federation. And she had all of her memories wiped. So they treated her as an Ashen Guard. But she and I are not going back there. So it's pretty safe, like, as the papers are slowly falling. <laughs> it's actually kind of like a really good shot. Like, it's, I don't know what it is, but like the shot composition is really, like, really sick with the papers <laughs> coming down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the nice set of paper kind of, like, yeah. They have left the Federation, so you're free of that grip. Well, it. In theory, yes. <laughs> Don't you think it's curious as a moment that you left the Federation, you felt more connected with the universe? Now that you think about it, Vi, you did. More one visit? That was when you started noticing you actually felt the connection people told, your parents told you about to the wheel and to the crucibles. You never really felt that. Would Vi have known about that it would be the crucibles? Or related to the crucibles? In the story, is your parents told you you were told about okay. it, so you would have been able to piece that together, but you never felt okay. it until you left. Yes, that is true. I think that may be because there aren't crucibles, or, well, they don't let us know about crucibles in the Federation, and there are multiples here. They don't let us know about anything in the Federation. That is why it is so dangerous. This is the mind poison which I am talking about. What exactly did you get into that you had to leave? I'll tell you what I got into. I got into deep. Into what? There are, let's face it, a lot of taboo areas that can get you killed. A significant number of them, several of which would result in summary execution. My curios curiosity about Enema my curiosity about the relationship with the Federation and the rest of the universe. There was one more, wasn't there, Brie? What you were looking into was how I had the Ashen Guard are made. Yeah, yeah. What's the origins of the Ashen Guard? There is something strange about them. And now to discover that they are sentient, that they are sentient automatons well, existing uh... outside of Federation space. This is, this is, this is incredible to me. She's not... Uh, Anima and the Ashen Forged are not automatons. I am sorry. I, I, used, a, I used an insensitive term. How do you, how do you refer to yourselves as? Like, you're just... Yeah. A people. You yeah. are your own yeah. people. You are your own individuals. Yeah. So you refer to most other Ashen Guard as cousin. Yeah. I mean... The Ashen Forged are just biological beings. We were created, not born, but we have biology, we're not mechanical. And they also have their own cultures. Their own culture, which is really interesting. This is, this is, this is the, uh, uh this is the revelation. This is, I, I had only just scratched the surface, uh, when I was inside the Federation space, but I, 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 I cannot tell you how validated I feel right now, having met you this day. Okay. <laughs> so the real question is, how does this relate to the Ashen Guard? Now you probably have even more questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. But now, but now I have more questions. My brain is is buzzing this activity, uh, as if the universe itself were begging me. You must, Kai. You must, Mister Maddox. You must, uh, Scarecrow. You must uncover this. You must uncover these secrets. You sure it's a okay? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, okay. like, I'm still behind oh. Vi yeah. at this point. So I'm gonna bend down and poke her, like, in the back of the shoulder and be like, we still have a job. Yes! Yeah. Oh, if I heard that, like, well, we get into the relationship first, don't we? 
So we'll get, you know, this, <laughs> this is perfect. So, since we were able to help your research so much, we we're wondering if you could um, help us with our project. We More are research. here looking. And, yeah, and then no this way. anima's like tugging on the back of my shirt. She's like, no. <laughs> You feel free to ignore me. I think you're right. The universe is calling us to you. I mean, there is some. Um, we're here researching something as well. And I don't think it's just a coincidence that you were able to find us out here. Wouldn't you say? I mean, you just did say that. It is not just a coincidence. It is the universe guiding us together. See? You are a Vic like me. Exactly. Yes. Also, you were tracing a strange signal that you picked up, like, what is this? Is it there? Are they after me? Have they found me? Or however you want Tell me this. Uh, without, um, uh, uh, without telling me what your mission is, does it have to do with this signal? And then he holds up, like, a really beat-up scanner. Yes. That signal's it. And it's picking up the exact signal you guys have been following. <laughs> yes. Bell doesn't even know, but he's just saying yes, it is. Yeah, I think... <laughs> I think my mental missives <laughs> anima real quick being like, he's been here three years. He knows the layout of the land better than us. He's relatively harmless. Crazy, but harmless. He's not an assassin. He was a broke. He was a he... <laughs> an information broker. When he whipped out the scanner, anima like brought the shield oh. back up. Oh! Like, <laughs> <and> me, like... <laughs> it's just... He... <laughs> I am now picturing very large dog cowering from tiny chihuahua. Yeah, that's, that's basically maybe that's basically yeah. the characterization that is happening here. Yeah, maybe another chihuahua. The amount of character relationships that can be summed up in dog memes is fantastic. Okay, yes, we are. I'll keep it general. We are looking for a ship. That's the signal we have for the ship. Ah. I thought it might be something like that. The we are in sync, you see. It is as if we could finish each other's... Missions. Ah, uh, yes, that is what I was going to say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, I mean, like I said, this is obviously, you know, meant to be. So, do you know this area very well? I mean, it seems like you've been here for a, a, a little while. Would Bell be able to glean that? I mean, just from, like, the the way the beard and everything, just... I mean, he's not that smart, so maybe not. Yeah, he's been on this planet for a while. Whether, However familiar he's with this area is a different mm -hmm. question, because he also did just recently start tracking the signal. It's a big planet. Could I toss a xenobiology and maybe see how much I've got in the old Nagrin? Let's go with lore. Lore. Well, on that 20. I have that one, too. Ooh, dang. Oh, dang. Shoot. Ooh. 23. This is scary. He's he's not fully there, but he's got <laughs> he's got skills though, so <laughs> <laughs> So I will say like you've been able to learn a lot about this planet. You may not be as familiar with this area just cuz like otherwise you might have picked up the signal earlier. Yeah. Or it could just be you just now got the thing to work again. <laughs> Yeah, could yeah. be any number of reasons. <laughs> I will tell you this. I don't know this specific area very well, but I, I, I have cataloged a little bit about this planet, at least what I have been able to observe, and it is in, and then he reaches into his backpack. Oh, oh. And then he starts, like, scrambling to pick up the papers. Uh, is this cataloged on these papers? Well, never mind the papers. I mean, I, I, I think you, yeah, no, I... Do not worry. When I told you I was not dangerous... I may have told you a bit of a fib in order to protect myself, for you see, uh, you did throw a knife at me. I am actually extremely dangerous. I can bend reality to my very will. I'm gonna insight check that. Can, oh, can I get my knife back by the way, too? Since, you know, since we're on the same team, or you mind if I get that? It's kind of personal. He, like, grabs it, and then it's like, ah, zit, no. ah, ah, yes. ah. I didn't throw as hard as I could, you know. I wasn't trying to, you know, kill. Just trying to, you know, it's like a warning Does throw. Does somebody want to, like, medicine check to bind his arm? Because yeah. that hurt. Oh, no, I got something. <laughs> Let me do... I think mass treatment should do it. Yeah. I'll do mass treatment. 
That'd be nice. Let me see your arm. So I'll take the knife. You know, she's got some of the blood. Ooh, eh, I've seen worse. Hold on one second. I guess I'll roll some healing, so it's gonna be 2d8, okay. Ooh. Is Kai a really touchy person, or are they not a big fan of being touched? You're being touched right now, I'm looking at the arm, so. <laughs> I, no, I think he can. I think he can do touch. I think uh, he's probably a little touch starved because I don't think people like touching him. He's not. Uh, <laughs> also, you've been alone. Yeah, on you've been alone on our planet. You know, the, the, I'm, just, I'm just saying the hygiene slips. You know. Yeah. And, and he he sort of how much did I heal? So that's gonna be how much? I mean, roll kind of low. That's gonna be not bad. Okay, so uh, some points of healing. Okay, cool. That almost tops me off. And uh, Kai sort of like puts a hand on yours while you're, like, kneeling him, and he says, We do not know each other, and my first impression of you was you throwing a knife into my arm. But I feel... I feel like we are connected. I feel like I can trust you, intrinsically. I'd, I'd recommend not trusting really anyone, but, I mean, you know... <laughs> I appreciate that. No, no, I have a feeling about this. You have kind eyes. You know, no one's ever said that kind eyes, you know, so... Reptilian eyes. <laughs> yeah, no kind reptilian eyes. eyes. But, you know... <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I do. So, and again, sorry about the whole knife. Like I said, I wasn't trying to kill. Just a little warning, you know. I should perhaps have been more transparent about um, not following you for uh, uh, for twenty five minutes straight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, so that's to me that makes it kind of warranted to throw something. But hey, we're misunderstand misunderstandings. We're all cleared up now, so no harm done. That can't be by guns. Yeah, Hakuna Matata is, and that's gonna make such a cool scar too. Like that scar looks so tight. So trust me, it's gonna look really cool when it fully heals. It's gonna look great. <laughs> so are we going after a signal together? The signal's pointing you into a cave. You can't see it on the map, but you are standing at a cave entrance and have been for the past, like, ten minutes. Yeah, if you want to lead the way. Oh, Kai, before we go in, do you know about any animals, or especially predators, that would go into a cave like this? Would I know anything? Oh, GM of GM. Either lore or xenobiology. Woo! Dang. <laughs> a lot. Is it even possible for you to fail the roll? I okay, so the, the, the two rolls you've called for are my two top skills. Okay. Everything else. No, I like this. It, no, this works. It makes sense. It sounds like expertise, because it sounds like expertise. It fits yeah. with your character. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's no, your mastery in them. Mass, yeah. Yeah, I think one of my things gives me bonuses on those two skills specifically. Okay, so when I throw other stuff at you later, you might not <laughs> get over twenty on every single one. Yeah, it's the oh, it's it's the studied savant ability from the Melder track, and it literally, if I already have like proficiency in lore and xenobiology or astrophysics, it like doubles my proficiency okay. bonus. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm bored. This is helping us. So I'm, I'm all yeah, for that this. Yeah, now we do it. <laughs> This is a good thing, so <laughs> let's... <laughs> I don't, haven't, like, figured out every single creature that lives on this planet. <laughs> but... Like, I feel like if I was wandering around the woods and I saw a cave and I knew nature, I'd be like, there's a possibility that, like, a predator might live in that cave. Could be a bear or... You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and also I don't know if you would know the names for them, is the thing? I would have made up my own. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, we just subscribe and, and see. <laughs> we could be like, okay, what is that? <laughs> What's the description? So with that, and just because I think it'd be funny, you've seen, you've seen bears go into the caves and things that look kind of like elephants. You don't know about this cave in particular, but you could also list off other creatures. Uh, that could be. Uh, uh, this could be uh, a bearophant cave. This could also be a spined uh, uh, red-breasted oscillator. I could see Van taking up roost in here. Um, I could also see a, uh, a flight of uh, uh, scurvelin. That is what I call them. They're scurvelin. Uh, they're very small, big, long, little, little beaks. They're like a mosquito bird. Oh, yes, yes. So, okay. of course, yes. I... 
very dangerous. <laughs> You've heard of none of yeah, this. Yeah, I, I think it might be like, okay. So... That matches are, are any of those predators or extremely territorial? Almost certainly, yes. All three of those. I would describe us, uh, uh, when we walk into this cave, as uh, uh, striding directly into potentially grave danger. And, and honestly, we've been talking you outside of it me. pretty loudly now, so I mean, nice. if anything's in there, I mean, we're, they're gonna know, so if the predators, I mean, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to fight something, we'll get the hammer and you, but I'm not worried about you handling yourself, I mean, you're more than capable from what I've seen, so I think we'll be okay. You've literally just seen her go up behind yeah. him and yeah. knock him out with a butt of her knife. <laughs> That's all Belle needed. Belle's like, yeah, okay. Anima has seen more. Yeah. Anima has seen Vi turbo shank. <laughs> Anima has, Vi has seen Vi literally kill a person instantly. It's fine. Yeah. That was a fun time. <laughs> they were a bad person, but yeah, that was, that didn't, Look. that wasn't a long fight. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> All right, so here I'll lead the way. Yeah, if I'll lead the way. I have my shield out, Warhammer. All right, who's who's falling behind? Who has really good um, ability to see in the dark? Because I do, but I don't know about anyone else. Yeah, but I got the shield though. I mean, I mean, if you want to lead the way, you can be my guess. I don't think I have any sort of. I think I can see. Oh, I have dark vision. I was gonna say Vi has dark vision for not superior. Oh, she has superior dark vision. I have claws. Uh, I can claw the darkness. <laughs> Fun. I have you um, all on the map if you want to arrange yourself because that is the entrance. Cool. Vi has better dark vision. You could go front, and I'll take up uh, the rear because I can also see in the dark, and the two that can't in the middle. All right, I mean, I seem to point with the shield speed in front, but you know what? Sets back. Well, there's all stealth and really good dark vision. Yeah. Vi's gonna stealth. I'm going to be quiet in this. I think it would be best if we did anyway, just so any enemies don't know where we are in the cave. Yes, of course. I can be extremely quiet. Uh, I can I can be so quiet. Uh, uh, I will not make a single peek. Uh, you will not even know that I am here. Um, I, I am here to support, so I cannot see. Could someone please tell me what is going on in front of us uh, as we walk forward? Uh, the dark makes me very nervous, you understand. Um, I don't like not uh, not having the sensation of, of, of being able to see things. Hey, hey, I got you, I got you. I got you, I'll be right, I'll be right beside you, don't worry. I'm right here, so I got you, you're good. Very good, thank you. I, I I think you are very kind, and I want you to know this. Um, and I am sorry that that came up. And and Kai, like <laughs> he has a really hard time not talking when he is specifically <laughs> supposed to not talk. It's Ooh. like Kai, Kai, no, I I get you. I appreciate the you know appreciate the compliment. You know. <laughs> Vi's eyes now just twitching, <laughs> and is like, hmm. I do think it's amazing <laughs> the amount of patience Spy has with this person. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah. Because like when, when, when they, when <laughs> they, they met, when they met Bell and Stavius, there was like none, but like, oh, but Kai. Well, this is more You're, patience it, than it was mainly than Stavius. Ever <laughs> True. Stavius. Fair enough. True. Okay. <laughs> also, she has a work history with True. this yeah. person. Yes, they're True. missing most of their French fries, but she's worked with him before. <laughs> I'm also just picturing Anima just reaching forward and clamping a hand over a guy's mouth. Yeah, Vi's gonna have her um, make sure her phantom blade's back. I don't back on her person. Yeah, I just picture it's been floating yeah, around. Yeah, just like, um, grab. Also, fun fact, um, phantom blade is based off of mage hand. Cool. It is fun. a knife that can float around as if you're operating it via mage hand. Kai, you may want to bring that weapon out. Just don't fire it, but you might just want to have it on the ready, just in case, okay? Oh, don't worry. I have it on a, a holster that it can go out pretty well. Yeah. So, as y'all are all walking into the cave, can I get a round of stealth yeah. checks? Okay. Ooh. Do you want me to re-roll? Because I did roll. It's not bad. What did you roll? A six. 14. I rolled a five. Oh, it's... goody. <laughs> also I got 14. 14, 14 so... This is somehow less stealthy than when you had someone walking around the woods with bags on their feet. 
So you're trying to be quiet. It's it's not working. Yeah. You know, I think this whole stealth thing, um, I think, yeah. I think what's over here is going to know. Also, talking doesn't help. <laughs> well, yeah, at this point, well, because Val yeah. would know that it's like, you know, because I imagine I've heard, like, it's not going for, I can hear the sounds pretty loud. Like, I'm kind of PCO, like, yeah, this is not. Well, if we are not going to worry about uh, 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 staying quiet, uh, do we also have to remain in the dark? Yeah, well, I would say no. You hear growling coming from deeper in the cave. Time to be a hero, I guess. <laughs> You have been listening to Board the Opal Star, an Esper Genesis 5e actual play podcast DM'd and produced by Brianna Jean as part of Pseudodim Social, a creative podcast network changing reality one story at a time. Filena is played by Alexis Workman. Anima is played by Casey Glover. Stavios is played by Shan Smith. Balamar is played by Blake Francis. And the theme music, as always, is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. If you don't want to wait to see what happens next, you can get early access to our episodes over at patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial. If you like our show, please consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting app so people can know where to find us. We couldn't do this without your help. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.